Okay, so hi, I'm Yosuke Matsutaka from AIST, and first of all, this is my first experience to speak in English in Japanese local conference, so <laughs> I'm feeling a little bit confused, and I, but I promise to try to keep me, keep myself in English mode, <laughs> at least during the presentation, but I'm not sure in me I'm, I'm discussing, but my talk is titled Developing OpenHRI, uh, Open Source Software Components for Human-Robot Interaction. And my talk is divided into two parts. First, it's the overview of the software. And the second part is I would like to focus more on development side because uh, as I see the list of the speakers, you know, all of them are very really eager open source developer, and I thought it would be valuable to share those techniques. And as for the overview, uh, in the past, the robots has never entered a place like kitchen or bedroom or the living room, as in these pictures. But recently, there is a strong demand for the robot, which is called personal and service robots. So. Uh, and the difference between the uh, conventional industrial robots and personal service robots is in the industrial robot case, the operator was the expert who has uh, training on how to operate the robot. And the robot only had to do the specified actions. But for the personal and service robots, the operator is actually the user itself. And they are quite novice on using the robots. And also, the robot has to cope with various situations and tasks. So there's a lot of, lot of challenge in personal and service robots. But one of the new issue is on the communication, because most of the operators are novice. And they only have very limited way to give teaching to the robot on using those devices. So communication will be synced as a key function. And Although the communication is very important, there is a quite a less robot who, which has a very nice communication functionalities. And we think part of the reason is listed here. Uh, reason why it is so difficult is because the communication function requires wide range of knowledge itself. It needs we need to understand audio signal processing and also lexical analysis and speech recognition synthesis, dialogue, etc., etc. So as a result, it requires high development effort if you develop this function from scratch. And also a low, you know, like low learning curve uh, because we are not a professional in developing communication system, I thought. But I am a professional, but most of the robotic developers are not a professional and not so, so much interested in the speech recognition issues. So that's our, our main motivation is to create a set of software which could be easily used for non-professional people. And we are now developing a set of software called OpenHRI. And it is implemented as a reference implementation of the NEDO Intelligent Robot Technology Software Project. And it integrates a wide range of open software based on RT's middleware specifications. And here's the architecture. And NEDO in NEDO IRTS common interface specification, the components are roughly divided into categories which is uh, audio, audio device components, which handles audio input and output, and audio filter component, which sometimes makes it takes important role in robot application. And also speech recognizer component, lexical processor components, and the manager components, and speech synthesis components. And between each category of the components, we define, strictly define the interface and the data type. So 
I will give a talk about OpenHRI, which is a specific reference implementation of this common interface specification, but you can just easily replace each component if you are not satisfied by our implementation because the, it is a common interface and it is agreed by a wide range of researchers. And for OpenHRI, we use a lot of, lot of open source software because there is a really nice set of software already open source and widely developed. And for input and output, we use port audio plus audio. And for audio filter, we find Speaks Codex is a really nice one. And Speaks Recognizer, we use Julius and Lexical Processor. We are currently developing NLTK based component. And for the manager, we use our in-house the manager called SEAT and the SOAR uh, artificial intelligence engine, engine. It's one of the most nice ones in this area, which is developed by Yumish. And for synthesis, we use OpenJTalk and Festival. And for the application, it is already applied to some amount of robots, and we apply this software ourselves to HRP series, and we also apply this robot, this software to Taizo robot, which is a rehabilitation exercise robot, which interacts with elderly, and RH1 is officer's robot, Smart Power is the robot developed by Yaska Electronics, which has double arms. And if you're, you don't have to mind on owning the real hardware robot because we also have a simulator based virtual robot and we'll show you the videos. Oops. So. This is OpenHRI software working on the OpenHRP simulator using CA10 robot arm model. Because we have speech recognizer, speech decider, and dialog manager, and OpenHRP simulator already. And it is implemented on the unified interface of OpenRTM. You can just easily hook up the interface between and construct a system like this to do your research. And this chart compares some existing uh, robot-related speech recognition toolkit with our software, and uh, one of the most famous one is the Hark software developed by Nakadai-san, and uh, it, it, it does very nice job on auditory processing. And it also has the uh, nice integration with Studio Speech Recognizer, but Hark itself doesn't have the ability to communicate with humans because it, it don't have speech synthesis function and dialog managers. And if you combine Hark with loss, you could get a uh, lot of lots of things. But one of the exceptions is they don't have standard dialog manager within. And we, the OpenHRI, is not so good at auditory processing right now, but we have a uh, it can be it, it is a complete set of components which can make a communication system and also has a standard dial manager which you can do the experience out of the box. And for the other features, it is very easy to install. So on Ubuntu, it only requires your three commands. You will install the de all the dependency. And on the Windows, you only have to run the one single installer. You will do the whole job for you. And the other feature is we have a standard oriented grammar and tools. And for grammars, if you use Julius directly, you have 
to know, learn about a uh, little bit of phonetical knowledge to write the speech recognition grammar. But for OpenHRI, we use uh, WCC SRGS grammar, which is uh, standard, standardized as a uh, voice XML grammar, so it's quite easy to edit, even for the novice people. And we also have uh, some visualization tool for help authoring. And we also support multilingual. We currently support Japanese English, and there's experience support for German. And we are planning to support Spanish and Korean in the near future. And for the development, and I think we already <laughs> don't <laughs> last in time, but just a small mentioning about the test and the development methodologies. And one big issue for us is the multilingual testing. And this schematic shows the normal system composition of voice recognition and voice synthesis components connected with the manager component. And this makes the standard uh, input uh, output cognitive system or the communication system. But if you want to test the voice recognition function, you have to hire native speaker to, <laughs> to test the, the robustness of this component. And for Japanese and English, it may be possible. But for other language, it, it turns out to be very difficult. But our, we found a kind of solution to this. And what we did is we made this system ordered in inverse way. So uh, in this case, the uh, speech recognition component recognize the voice synthesized by the voice synthesis component. So it's a kind of uh, self-looping system, but we find out this works very well. And we only required to uh, change the connection between the components because this is totally, de totally based on component architectures. And I think for the document, Jeff has already given the talk about the outer share system, but we are uh, introducing some kind of document automation to it and generate almost half of the document using these automated systems. So you will prevent mistakes maybe making a document. And for develop deployment, I think OpenLab is also using the Launchpad system, but we also use it. It's quite useful. So I suggest <laughs> everyone to use this. It's, but I don't have much time. For, but for Windows system, uh, it currently relies on full-time program and we are hiring. So we are right now working for some automated way to make this easier. And I think that's it. So, <laughs> and our kind of challenge and the open question is how we can make this sustainable because we are currently sponsored by national funding, but we all ended this year. So our problem is the next year. Okay, thank you.